Hey, welcome back. All right, so last time we saw how to read uh, stuff from our table using uh, the controller or using the facade DB uh, class here, which is here, right there. So let's find another way to actually do this. So what I'm going to do here is let me mute this with a comment so comment this out doggo block comment so this is not working anymore so how exactly do we do this well if you look here there's a models folder so if the, this doesn't exist uh if you have an earlier version of laravel you see that the user thing is outside it's not in any folder so you can put it in a folder if you want that's entirely up to you but there's a model here so what does a model do and what is it so a model is just the connection to your database so it connects to your database so that it can make it easier to read information from your database so there are some rules to follow in order to use a model so the first thing is if you have a table because you have to map your models to your tables so let's say you have two ta uh, database tables on your system then you are going to need two models so one model per table so if i have a users table like this it means i'm going to need a user model like that with a capital u so if i have a uh, groups table it means i'm going to have a group model like that so the moment i create a group model laravel is going to assume that a groups table exists okay so uh if if this a groups table does not exist, we're going to have problems because it will assume that it exists and it will try to read from there. So here, what we have is we have a user model that already exists, but it's not doing, it's not connected to my users table yet. So let me go to my uh, table here, my database, and there's already a users table, right? That's where I have my users, but in here I already have a user model that is doing something entirely different so as you can see here it's very possible that sometimes you don't have the luxury to name those things that way so if you can't name things like this there's another way to do it which we are going we are going to see also when the table and the model do not match in terms of names but for now we want to see how it works when they do match. So what I would do is I'll rename this user uh, model here. Just put a two at the end there, just so we can keep it, but it won't be in use. Then I want to create my own user model that will connect to my users table. So how do I do that? I will go to Artisan, right click here and open the folder where it exists. Hold down shift, right click on an empty space. Make sure nothing is selected, right click and say open command window here. So if you can't do that one, just open your command window and navigate to this folder where artisan exists. And then we're going to type php artisan make full colon model. Press enter. Sorry about that. I didn't uh, give it the model name. So I have to put a model name there, which is users, capital U, user actually, without the S. Okay, so model created successfully. I'll type exit to exit. Now, if I come back here, I'll see there's a user model here, not the other one that we renamed, but the other one here. So this is what it contains. So once you create a user's model like this, or a model like this, you don't need to do anything inside the model. You just need to use it because it's extending a class that already has methods in here that we can use. 
So no need to add anything here. So all we have to do is go back to the controller and then use the class here. But before we do that, we have to import it in order for us to use it. The same way uh, when these are being imported here before we used them here, like the DB we imported before using it here. So let's import the new one as well. So we're going to say use app slash models slash user. So we're importing it from where it exists. And this is right here, app models user. So now that we've imported it like this, that's it. We can use it now. So here I can use it to read some data. So let me read some data. I'm going to say data is equal to uh -huh, user, so capital U, double column, and then I'm going to say all, like that. That's how you read all the records in your database, in your table. So as you can see, I haven't provided any table name here the way I was doing here, like selector from users or anything like that, because it will assume that this already exists. The users table exists. So let me refresh and you see that nothing has changed. The data has all been read quite okay. No errors whatsoever. But what if I want to select only uh, ID number one? So I can say something like, where and then put in brackets like that i will say uh, id that's the column i'm looking for comma the id itself like that but for it to get this let me come back here for a second before i do that refresh so it doesn't get anything there that's because i didn't tell it to get so once you use the where clause you have to do a get like so at the end so don't worry about this syntax here. I'm going to explain uh, in further detail in another video. So don't worry about it. So there we go. I got my ID number two. Now, if I want to use this ID here, no problem. I will copy that. So whatever the ID that comes in, that's what we will use. I'll put it there. Okay. So now I can just type slash one. I'll have number one, or I can type slash two. Then I'll have the second record like that. Okay, so that's how you do it. So in order to replicate what we had here, what I would need to do is cut this and put it here. And then put a copy of that here and just use all like Okay, then I can remove the comments here now. I still need that I. Okay, so now we have the if statement we had earlier, but this time we're using a model. So let me come back here for a second and refresh. And you see number two, if I go number one, I get number one. Okay, so very important. Now, um, Let's imagine these two do not match. Let's imagine we can't afford to do this. So what happens in that case? So what I will do is I'll change my model name. I'll rename it to people. Okay. So now that I've renamed the file, I also have to rename the class name itself. And it will be people, the model name. Okay. So that now we can have the user's uh, thingy back. But before we do that, let me come back here. So I have to change this import to people everywhere where I used, uh, come here, people, also there, people, excuse me. So now that the people's table does not exist. Instead, we want to read from the users table. It can't guess this. So let's see what will happen when we try to read. And of course, we get an error. It says table was not found. The best table 
was not found. So how do we tell it which table to look for? Well, it's simple. We go back to the class right here inside the class here. We have to create a variable called table and then we tell it what the table is. So our table is users like that. So let me come back here and let me refresh. Okay, so it's saying unexpected variable table. That's because you have to tell it whether it's public, uh, protected, private. So let's try public, like so. Refresh, and it can read, right? But this should be protected and not public uh, for security reasons, but it can be public, so that's entirely up to you. But the documentation says it should be protected, but I intentionally just use public because to show that you can actually do it that way. So if we select two, everything is working fine. Now it knows what table to read from. Just remember that you have to put this in the model file itself and not here in the controller where you're using it. You tell it from here. Okay. So one last thing you have to remember is that if you want to save information, so let's try and uh, save some data. Uh, wait a minute. I think we can do that in a, a later video. But the important thing you have to remember is that when you want to save uh, data using a model, you must have two, uh, three, things to keep in mind actually. So the first thing you must keep in mind is that you must have an ID which is primary key. Oh, primary key. And then you have to have two columns. One is created at and modified at like so. So you must always have these uh, columns but we're going to see how to use that when we actually save some data. So this is just a, a heads up to remember. So when you're creating your, uh, your table to be used with the model, make sure these three columns actually exist. And if you want to learn more about this section right here, what we've been talking about, just go to laravel.com and click on the documentation. And once you get to the documentation, click on eloquent getting started so here you shall see the things I was talking about how to create a model and some other options you can add to create a controller at the same time and where is this some items you can add like where, where you need to specify the table the specifying of what column is the primary key if it's not the id and if you don't want it to do some incrementing automatically that's up to you okay key type as well if it's not a number and then you see here where it says created add and oh it's actually not modified it's updated add sorry my bad those two columns should be there that's why it's important to read the documentation you see Okay, so it gives you all these uh, information on how to read, like using the or, using the where, order by, and so on. All right, so happy reading. I'll see you in the next video.